A landmark study came out in 2005 and showed that if you fuse the blood systems of old and young mice, a process known as heterochronic parabiosis, it rejuvenated the cells of old mice. It suggested that there was something in the blood, and there were two possible explanations. Either there were rejuvenating factors in the young blood, or there was dilution of some pro-aging factors from the old blood, or maybe some combination of both. Well, since 2005, more studies have come out. A 2016 study showed that heterochronic blood exchange, so just transfer from young to old or old to young, without fusing, had a greater impact when old blood was given to young mice than when young blood was given to old mice. In better words, the inhibitory effects of old blood are more pronounced than the benefits of young. So, somewhat ruling out factors in the young blood, but even more support came from studies published a few years ago where again they supported this latter theory. You see, simply diluting the old blood, that is, taking out the plasma of blood out of old mice and replacing it with saline and albumin, an abundant protein found in blood, had the same effect. This process, known as neutral blood exchange, involves no Frankenstein surgery or young blood vampire-like scenario. Amazing. But it still didn't address why or how. The authors of that paper left us with a rather interesting hypothetical hypothesis graph of what potentially might be happening to some factors present in the blood, but they were otherwise unsure on what or how these beneficial effects were being achieved. What were the important factors to remove? Well, we now have some more answers. But before we get to that, we must first talk about senescent cells. No, not because I researched them and think they're really interesting, but because they are relevant to these new findings. So senescent cells are cells that have entered cellular senescence. This is a cell state that cells appear to enter in response to irreparable or chronic damage. The cells stop replicating, become bloated and secrete a variety of factors into their surrounding environment, such as growth factors and inflammatory factors. For we'll explain a video here. Our current understanding is that the secretory phenotype has function. It is involved in signalling to the body to respond and react to the damage that perhaps caused the cell to become senescent in the first place. So senescent cells are important for wound healing and afterwards are removed by the immune system. However, senescent cells have been shown to accumulate with age and cause chronic inflammation that has been linked with ageing and disease, so-called inflammaging. And so the secretory phenotype is interesting in this context as these accreted factors are present in the blood. Moreover, previous work has shown that if you transplant senescent cells into young mice, it causes premature aging phenotypes. So could senescent cells and their secretory phenotype be linked with the plasma dilution experiments? Well, that brings us to this latest publication, Systemic Induction of Senescence in Young Mice After Single Heterochronic Blood Exchange. So what they did here is perform heterochronic blood exchange between old male mice and young male mice. After just one of these exchanges, the authors showed that the aged mouse blood induced senescence in the young male mice. So that's all good me saying, but where is the evidence? And what happens if the experiments were repeated, but the old mice were first treated with senolytics? Well, just to get everyone on the same page, Let's first just recap what's actually in blood. Well, firstly, we have the red blood cells that carry oxygen around the body. Let's have a round of applause. <laughs> then we have the white blood cells and platelets. Responding to wounds and infections, very important. And then we have the plasma, the soluble fraction of blood and it contains water, ions, proteins, like these inflammatory and growth factors, but mainly an abundant protein called albumin, nutrients, water, again, <laughs> more water, gases, hormones. Yeah, our blood carries a lot. And so you can think of blood as a transport and communication channel. And so in heterochronic plasma exchange, all these components are moved between the old and young mice without the fusing while in neutral blood exchange, they just took out and replaced the plasma with saline solution and albumin. 
All right. So now for the data. They were interested in looking at how senescent cell incidence, the presence, was affected following blood exchange of old and young mice. And to do that, they used a special genetically modified reporter strain for the young mice that light up when senescent cells are present. Following 14 days of blood exchange, they see a significant increase in the whole body signal in the young mice receiving old blood. So looking at the young old EO mice, yes, we're calling them EO mice, <laughs> data points. Now, a little brief interlude. You may think, like me, the results seem somewhat underwhelming. As sure, we can see an increase, but it isn't really that much. But actually, that is probably what you would expect. Figure 2b looks like the young mice have not gained many senescent cells. But the young mice are, well, young, and you wouldn't expect many. Plus, this is 14 days after the exchange. Perhaps the immune response of the young mice has already removed some of the senescent cells. It would have been nice to have seen a few more time points. But anyway, back to the data. They then analysed the old blood and found that it contained higher levels of some classical senescent secretory factors, such as interleukin-1 alpha, interleukin-6, and TNF alpha. Looking at other physiological markers, they found that the young mice had increased fatigability and shorter treadmill running distance, and they had increased liver fibrosis and renal damage. So, what about if the old mice were given senolytics before the plasma exchange? For those of you unfamiliar, senolytics are supposed to selectively kill senescent cells. So what happens then if senescent cells are removed from the old mice before the blood is exchanged? Well, they used the senolytic combination of the satinib and quercetin and gave it to the mice for five cycles lasting three days, separated each time by a week. Unlike in the previous case, in the senolytic treated old mice, there was no senescence transfer to the young mice. There was also an improvement in grip strength and treadmill distance compared to before. And these findings indicate that the senescent cell clearance attenuates the negative effects of old blood on energy balance and on the impairment of physical activity. Now, they don't pin down what exactly in the old blood is having this impact, though they say that following the senolytic treatment blood transfer, the mice had reduced levels of several SASP factors, these secretory, these senescent secreted factors. Therefore, it does somewhat suggest a positive feedback, a downward spiral of doom, where senescent cells secrete inflammatory factors that can induce senescence in other cells that then secrete more inflammatory factors that can then induce even more cells to enter senescence and so on and so on. This is known as paracrine induced senescence. However, it is unlikely to be that simple since the authors also looked at old mice receiving blood from either old mice or old mice treated with senolytics and found that it didn't reduce the senescent markers or affect the loss of muscle strength, renal damage or liver fibrosis indicating that there are senescence unrelated factors in the blood. And so things are still quite unclear. And I think to further consolidate this, we basically need to see the plasma dilution experiment repeated instead of this heterochronic plasma exchange. Why? Partly because of the controversies around young to old blood transfers, though that said, we should be encouraging more young people to do blood donations to save lives especially if the blood is less likely to induce senescence in recipients who likely already are dealing with some serious illness or accident, but also the fact that therapeutic plasma exchange is already approved by the FDA. There is also the big limitation in the study that they only looked at male mice and not female mice, partly to avoid hormonal complications, but that is also something that could be interesting to look at. And then again, this is all in mice, though there is some human data where they took human plasma from young and old individuals and added them to human cells in a dish. There was a greater increase in the abundance of inflammatory factors when old plasma was given compared to young plasma. So it's in line with this paracrine-induced senescence model, how the secretory phenotype of one senescent cell can cause other cells to become senescent. And so, all in all, mammalian ageing appears to be driven by the excess of systemic factors that include SASP, so the senescent secreted factors, and the attenuation or removal of these factors is expected to yield new therapeutic strategies for health span extension. And so if you got this far, I guess you're interested in age reversal, 
If so, you should check out this video here on three different strategies being investigated. Anyway, with that, I hope you've learned something. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.